Have you ever wondered if you can pass part of a vector to a function without creating a new one? It's a common question among programmers, and today we're going to explore this intriguing topic together. I totally get it. You want to optimize your code and avoid unnecessary iterations. Many developers face this challenge, especially when working with large datasets. You're not alone in this quest for efficiency. Here's the specific question we're tackling today. One user asked, is it possible to send part of a vector as a vector to a function in constant time? They want to pass a range of elements without creating a new vector. Sound familiar? Let's dive into the details. To understand this, we need to look at how vectors work in programming. Vectors are dynamic arrays, and while they allow for easy access to elements, slicing them typically requires creating a new vector. But what if we could do it differently? Stay with me. By the end of this video, you'll know how to efficiently pass parts of a vector to a function without the overhead of creating new ones. To pass a part of a vector to a function in constant time, the user can utilize a technique called a view or a slice. This allows the user to reference a portion of the vector without creating a new one. In C++, the user can achieve this by using the vector's iterator. The user can create a function that accepts two iterators, which define the range of the vector they want to pass. Next, the user should call this function by providing the iterators for the desired range. For example, to pass elements from index 10 to 50, the user can use the begin method and the plus operator. Finally, the user can modify the size of the new vector within the function if needed. However, remember that the original vector remains unchanged. Fun fact, did you know that the concept of vectors in programming is inspired by mathematical vectors? They both allow for operations on collections of elements, making them incredibly powerful. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative approach suggested by a user is to use iterators as parameters for a range-based function. Instead of passing a part of the vector directly, you can specify the range using iterators. This method can be generalized to work with any container that supports range iteration, making it a flexible solution. Now, let's dive into a different answer from another user. An alternative approach shared by a user involves using iterators to pass part of a vector to a function. If you have a vector with 100 elements, you can call the function with the first 10 elements by using the syntax fv.cbegin via cbegin plus 10. This creates a new vector from the specified range and passes it to the function. Let's take a look at another answer from another user. One alternative solution is to use a feature called span, which is proposed for inclusion in the C++ standard. A span acts like a vector but is a reference type, meaning it doesn't hold its own data. Instead, it points to the original vector's data, allowing you to pass parts of the vector efficiently. This method is lightweight and designed to be passed by value, making it a recommended practice by C++ experts. You can find more about SPAN and its implementation in the Microsoft GSL repository. Here's a pro tip. Always consider using iterators for better performance when dealing with large data sets. It can save you time and resources in the long run. And there you have it. You can pass parts of a vector to a function efficiently using iterators. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more programming tips and tricks. Happy coding.